Hello everyone. So today I'm going to discuss another very important topic, which is ocular toxoplasmosis. And this is going to be the last topic in the ophthalmology series. So um, ocular toxoplasmosis, let, us, uh, let me give you a bit of uh, an introduction of the topic. So it's easier for you to take history and to rule out the differentials here. So uh, ocular toxoplasmosis, it is the most common cause of posterior uveitis. Um, so that's why it's really important because it's really common. Now, it can occur in two forms, congenital and acquired. As you all know, toxoplasmosis is caused by uh, a parasite, which is called as toxoplasma gundai, and it is associated with cates, okay, because it is excreted in cates feces. So, um, this uh, organism usually, it does not cause any, you know, symptoms in immunocompetent people, but uh, it can affect in the intrauterine fetus. So what happens is if a pregnant woman is exposed to uh, cates during pregnancy, uh, she can acquire the toxoplasma, um, the toxoplasma parasite, but it won't cause any symptoms in her because she is an immunocompetent adult, but the organism can pass on to the fetus and cause congenital abnormalities like congenital cataract, intracranial densification, and which is called as the congenital toxoplasmosis syndrome. Now, it can be acquired also. So, as I already told you, Toxoplasma gundai does not cause any symptoms in immunocompetent, um, in the immunocompetent subject. But it can be acquired by interaction with gates and eating undercooked meat. So, when, and when it enters the body of an immunocompetent host, the immune system suppresses it and it's uh, remain there in the latent form. Later on, if the person become immunocompromised due to uh, any reason like diabetes mellitus or the patient is on long-term steroids due to an autoimmune disease or the patient is a transplant patient and is on immunosuppressants or um, in HIV patients, if the patient acquires HIV and become immunocompromised, then the toxoplasma gundai reactivates itself and cause uh, toxoplasmosis, which is then symptomatic. So it also causes systemic toxoplasmosis, causing systemic symptoms like fever and uh, lymphadenopathy, but it also affects the eye. It reaches the eye through the blood, uh, through blood circulation, and it causes posterior uveitis, first of all, because uvea is the layer where all the blood vessel is. So first of all, it causes posterior uveitis and then retinitis, and then it also involves the vitreous humor of the eye, causing vitritis. So it causes, uh, so it uh, causes what we call as uh, vitrochorioretinitis. Okay, because it involves all these three layers. So what are the symptoms here? So symptoms are ocular pain and blurring of vision and floaters. So the patient will present with a painful blurring of vision with floaters and cervical lymphadenopathy. Okay, so this is basically painful impairment of vision. I've already discussed the differentials of painful impairment of vision with you. So you need to rule out those differentials here. Okay. So how to take history here? So first of all, we'll ask the patient which eye is affected, okay? And we'll ask what about the other eye. But as it is an, a systemic disease, it will affect the both eyes. So it will be bilateral. And then we will explore the visual loss. We'll ask about uh, the duration and we'll ask uh, whether it's constant or it comes and goes, whether it's partial or complete, any pain, any associated redness, any discharge, the cardinal symptom of eye diseases. Okay, and then we will rule out the other differentials of painful impairment of vision. So we'll ask about fading of colors, which occur in optic neuritis. Okay, so optic neuritis, there is eye pain and there is fading of color and blurring of vision. In glaucoma, there is pain, pain uh, you know, the uh, painful impairment of vision, but there are hollows around the light. Okay, so this, this hollows, hollows around the light is really specific for glaucoma. So we will ask this as well. And uh, the answer will be, of course, negative. Uh, also, we will explore the pain a little bit. We'll ask about the severity of pain. So in glaucoma, the pain is really very severe and the patient is vomiting and complaining of headache and literally screaming with pain. Whereas in uh, toxoplasmosis, the pain is not so much. Okay. Then we'll exclude keratitis by asking about any glaring of light. Okay. So keratitis is inflammation of cornea and the lights appear very bright to these patients, which is called, any glare, which is called as glaring of light. So that's basically photosensitivity. And then we'll exclude trauma by asking about recent eye injury. Also, we'll exclude um, some other conditions which cause posterior uveitis and can present with similar symptoms. One of this is Bechet disease, which is an autoimmune disease that causes posterior uveitis. So in, in this disease, there is, along with posterior uveitis, there are oral and genital ulcers. So we'll ask about any ulcers in the mouth or the private parts. 
uh, to exclude basher disease and there are HLA B27 spondyloarthropathies causing uveitis. So to exclude them, we'll ask about any joint pain, okay? So this was basically the history of presenting illness. Then we'll go on to the past history. We'll ask the patient, has this ever happened before? Okay, and any other medical condition at all. Then in meftosa, medications are really important. So look for any immunosuppressive medication that the patient might be taking. And then um, family history and then uh, the psychosocial part. So psychosocial exposure to pets is really important here, okay? Um, if you are suspecting HIV, then the sexual history is really important, okay? So you'll ask about the sexual history to, uh, you know, to, to know whether the patient might be um, high risk for HIV. Then ideas, concerns, and expectation. In examinations, you will examine vitals. You will do general physical examination. You will do visual equity, visual field, and fundoscopy, okay? So on fundoscopy, you might see something like this. So this is basically the picture of the retina. This one here is the optic disc from which all the vessels are emerging, okay? So this is the optic disc. This entire is the retina. What you can see here are black spots, black lesions, like scars, okay, which you can't see anywhere else on the retina. So basically, when the toxoplasma infection, you know, when it is um, inactive, you know, it causes scars like this. So this is basically an inactive lesion. And this one here, this whole big lesion, this, this yellowish part, which is paler as compared to the rest of the retina, this area here, this paler is compared to the rest of the retina. It's like a big cotton wool spot. So this is basically the area of the active lesion. Okay. The black part is the necros the necrose part, and this part is the area of active inflammation. Okay. Sometimes it can also appear like this on fundoscopy. And this presentation is called as uh, headlight and fog. So basically this area here, the bright part here, this is basically the part of active inflammation. And then the entire of the retina and the vitreous humor, because the vitreous humor is also inflamed. And when you look at the retina through fundoscopy, first you see the vitreous humor and then there is retina. So the entire vitreous humor is inflamed and there are inflammatory cells in the vitreous humor. So the rest of the, the retina appear fogged and the active focus on inflammation appear bright. And this is known as um headlight and fog appearance which is pathognomonic of you know these uh, pictures they are pathognomonic of chorioretinitis here you can also see the necrose part and uh, one part is here okay so this is what you are going to see on fundoscopy and the diagnosis of toxoplasmosis is basically clinical based upon the appearance and the history history of exposure to gates okay history of immunosuppression either because of diabetes, either because of immunosuppressive drugs like steroids and um, or HIV history, okay? How you are going to explain it to the patient? We'll tell the patient that you seem to have an infection of the eye. I suspect that it is caused by a bug called toxoplasma because you have, this bug causes an infection in people with weakened immune system and you have weakened immune system because you are taking steroids or you are taking methotrexate or you are taking, um, or you are, um, you know, um, you are diabetic, whatever cause of immunosuppression that the patient is having in the history, you will tell it to the patient here, okay? Uh, what we are going to do for this patient, so we will arrange an immediate referral to the hospital because this condition can cause, can cause necrosis of the entire retina and permanent visual loss, that is blindness. So we will arrange immediate referral to the hospital and the hospital will tell the patient that they are going to do some blood tests to confirm the presence of bug in the blood, okay? So basically IgG and IgM, antibodies against toxoplasma gondii. And uh, they will also check the level of your immunity. So basically they will do CBC and CD4 count, okay? Uh, we'll also tell the patient that as this infection is very common and patient with HIV, they might test you for HIV as well if that's okay with you, okay? Apart from that, we'll tell the patient that they are going to give you some antibiotics according to the hospital protocol and um, some medications to, you know, steroid eye drops to uh, reduce the inflammation. So basically, the classical therapy for toxoplasmosis is pyrimethamine, sulfadiazine, and steroids. So that was all about ocular toxoplasmosis. Please make sure to rule out the other differentials in the history. Um, uh, the management is really simple. 
and the fundoscopy pictures. Uh, so if you look carefully at the pictures, then you will never forget them. And they're really pathognomonic. So whenever you see them, you will be able to recognize them. Um, also, please practice the fundoscopy. All the steps of fundoscopy really well. And um, so yeah, that's, that's all about toxoplasmosis. And I will see you soon with another video.